What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Everything Horror Podcast. This is my first time hosting tonight, so uh, I'm going to try not to sound like too much of a dork. But now I'm about to say some dorky shit. So, I am the cannibalistic, suicidistic, multilinguistic, cannibal kid, Dustin Walker. And I'm going to be hosting tonight. We have also on the chat tonight, we have the homicidal, genocidal, cinephile, Paul Dulski. What's up, Paul? Not much, man. Um, geez, I'm, I just need to put that down on my resume now. <laughs> for like, maybe that might fit good for my hobby, where I like to walk around the beach and just like stalk the shit out of other women, and then like, and Talk then go home to Tessa, and then go to Tessa and be like, Tessa, I think we should like totally like go knock on their door. <laughs> <laughs> and also tonight we have. The purveyor of perversions, the very nice, very evil Miss Tessa Baker. What's up, Tessa? Oh, not much, Dustin. Thank you for the title. <laughs> so uh, recently, we did a podcast where we had uh, Christelle Labella on, and we talked about the 1983 Robert Hiltzik classic Sleepaway Camp, and. We kind of briefly touched on the sequels on that one, but nobody was really a fan of them. Like personally, I love the uh sequels but i know they're not great movies they're just different movies so uh i figured we'd talk about two and three today yeah they're very different in a unique own way not to interrupt you but yeah i mean i mean some of the killed were fun yeah yeah fun kills very cheap it's just a very different movie oh yeah uh we touched it on touched on in the last one um the first Sleepaway Camp is more of a whodunit slasher. It's more of a, a serious, darker tone to it. Uh, in 1986, I think it was, Robert Hiltzik wrote a script for a follow-up, Sleepaway Camp 2. And uh, the studios were not a fan of it, so they just offered to buy the name Sleepaway Camp 2 from Robert Hiltzik. And they just came up with their own script. They wanted to go a more comedic, light-toned route. So uh, they hand it off to Fritz Gordon and uh, Michael Simpson to direct. Fritz Gordon to write, Michael Simpson to direct. But uh, Felissa Rose read for the Angela Baker part, but they didn't feel she was right for the comedic tone of it. So I think they always had Pamela Springsteen in, uh, in mind for the role. I think that had a lot to do with the, probably the funding to get the movie even funded. But uh, before we jump into the movie, just – how would you guys compare Pamela Springsteen's Angela Baker to Felissa Rose's Angela Baker? Do you think that it's possible that Felissa Rose grew up to be this Angela Baker, or is it just too far removed from the original material? I think it's too far removed. I, I don't see uh, Felicia Rose as being so happy and chipper and stuff. And um, considering the fact that in the original Sleepaway Camp, she was very quiet and reserved, except for when she spoke to Paul or Ricky, um, which we all know what happened to Paul in that movie. But anyways... <laughs> Um, yeah, we talked about that, too, on the last episode. <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know. I, I think that Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3, Angela versus Felicia Rose, it's like two different people. Like, I don't see it being, like, the same Angela. I mean, I appreciate their, their like, change-up take on Angela and maybe trying to make this Angela out to be like reformed or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Transformed in a way that she was uh, cured for lack of better wording from this, from the um, psych ward and the sex change and all that jazz. But I don't know. I like, uh, I like the Felissa Rose uh, approach to Angela better. It It's more creepy, I guess, versus this Angela. She's funny and really 
really fucking weird with her over chipperness that made it made me want to fucking strangle her myself but <laughs> that's besides the point you know it's just like it's like yeah i get it you don't like like people being naughty and perversion and um fornicating and drugs and alcohol and this and that and everything but i was like do you really have to be so fucking chipper about it like really it's, uh, uh, it, it's just one of those things where i'm just like i really can't take this angel seriously and i know that's not i i know that's the point you're not supposed to take her seriously she's supposed to be funny it's supposed to be more of like a comedy horror twist versus the original sleepaway camp with angela being it more of like I guess the mysterious homicidal vibe, but I don't know this, this Angela, just this version of Angela in two and three, I just wanted to fucking kill her. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, you're too chipper. Tone down the chipper, please. So those are my thoughts. What'd you think, Paul? My thoughts is clearly not going to be as long as Tessa's, but anyway, uh, to get to to it, I guess is uh, yeah. I think I think Felicia Rowe does more of a better job when it comes to that, just because of the original film. Um, I mean, nothing can beat that iconic face at the end, and it's not like Pamela Springsteen did anything like you know, like horrifying or like some type of weird look to give like i don't know the counter or whatever kind of like what for the road like who was she even making that face at again to like i don't remember i think she was just doing it just because they were just like ha, 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 surprise you know like ha, ha. anyway the point of this is like yeah it's a fun cheesy little film it's sad that they had to go through the whole like it had to be bought by other people basically to put their filthy dirty paws in into something that could have been better possibly i mean i don't know if that's what uh return to sweep away camp was supposed to be like and i know eventually we'll talk about that movie maybe um Anyway, the point that I'm trying to say, though, is I'm wondering, like, how much more different the other script compared to what we got um, changed, like, for really everything, I guess. I mean, I know, like, Dustin said it's a co comedic, it's, you're supposed to be, like, having a comedic horror, but um, honestly, I don't even find any anything funny in it, except for maybe, like, maybe two things i think yeah well yeah uh, when i say it's a funny movie it's not laugh out loud funny i probably barely crack a smile when i watch it but or I like know, a just, white chuckle yeah. yeah it puts me in a good mood to watch these movies whereas the first one which I, I love the first one but it's more of like a mellow it's a funny movie in its own right too it has a lot of funny stuff going on it but uh two and three definitely more intentional with the comedy but uh, one thing I wanted to uh, note about the Pamela Springsteen, Angela Baker, is uh, maybe you guys have some insight on it. But, you know, I, I said the theory in the last one that I think that they are two different people. It's not the same Angela Baker. So if let's say this is my own fan theory. So Felissa Rose goes to the mental hospital and she meets the Pamela Springsteen's character. Oh, yep. And uh, Pamela just hears the stories, but I think Pamela Springsteen's Angela Baker is more inspired by uh, Crazy Aunt Martha, Desiree Gould's character, than Felissa Rose's Angela Baker. Just uh, really upbeat, cheerful. I don't know. Did you, uh, could, could you guys see that? Maybe she was inspired. If this isn't the, the original. Angela Baker. This is the angel of death, Angela Baker. Do you think she could have been inspired by Crazy Aunt Martha? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I could see that connection. Yeah, yeah I just think it'd be a... Uh, it's just a fun way to look at uh, Angela Baker and the sequels. But, yeah, talking about... What, what, bringing up what you, uh, you just mentioned, Paul, about uh, too bad we didn't get the original script for the sequel if... 
return to Sleepaway Camp was any indication of what that script would have been, then we were better off with two and three than than the fourth one. Or return to Sleepaway Camp. But anyway, we can uh, jump into the movie now, part two. Well, first uh, just to say it's a sad, it's, it's sad that like you know the lady that did play Aunt Martha passed away last year on uh, May twenty fourth. So that sucks. Yeah. You know, Desiree Gould. I think that's how you pronounce her name anyway. That sounds right to me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, just to touch on before we do go into it, but um, for what you were saying about the two different uh, Andrews, I don't know. I'm going to almost say it was maybe just, I'm, I'll, I'll be that guy that said, no, I don't think, I don't think so. I, I could see the, um, I could see like Felicia Rhodes' character was like the same one in two. Like she actually got a full operation, which I don't know how that would be really possible per se. But I mean, as um, one of the characters in that movie said, it's like, oh, look at where the taxpayers' money went. We had to pay for that surgery. (laughs) So, so I don't know. I mean, I would almost feel like, like um, it's still the same person. Like maybe like what what to say for the for the example right now is that uh that she had plastic surgery, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's never hinted at that it's it's not the same person. I just think it would have been fun if, you know, with Pamela Springsteen doing two and three, if they came back with a four, and uh, Felissa Rose is now the heroine. She's out to reclaim her name, that it wasn't her doing all these murders, and she's going to take revenge on the Pamela Springsteen, the fake angel of death. I think that could have been a fun, uh, fun for a fourth movie. Angela Baker versus Angela Baker. Kind of like yeah. with, um, kind of, kind of like with like Friday the Thirteenth. With what was it, Part Five, where it was uh, right in, the ambulance the driver, imposter. yeah, the the yeah. imposter there. Oh yeah, uh, Roy. Roy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would have been, like it. yeah, it would have been interesting if we saw like Jason meet Roy kind of moment. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, part two opens up. We have uh, the fire. And we, uh, so we, within like three minutes of the movie, we already see the uh, the tone has switched from the original to a more comedic tone. We got uh, Angela whacking Phoebe, I think was her name was, whacking her in the head with a damn branch. And it just looks like somebody slung fucking mud and blood all over the side of her head and she barely touches her head looks like she's having a headache she falls to the ground angela cuts her tongues out uh you can see her lip quivering and her eyes blinking when they're cutting the tongue out and the blood spraying on her face i mean it's uh, it's it's obvious they didn't care too much for the uh realism in this one with with the kills and everything they weren't too worried about i guess they didn't have much of a budget budget to uh re- Shoot a lot of scenes. Two and three were filmed uh, within six weeks. They wrote part three while they were shooting part two, and they just decided let's do a third movie. Uh, the budget for the original Sleepaway Camp was three hundred fifty thousand dollars. The budgets for two and three together were four hundred sixty-five thousand for both films. So yeah, they it's a much smaller budget to be balanced between the two films. But uh, yeah. Well, what did you guys think of the, the like? Did you guys have any favorite kills from uh two? Well, I know what Tessa's favorite kill is, but it's probably Paul's favorite too because it, it's <laughs> yeah. it's just it's it's the it's the, like the just desserts like one, and that would be Allie. I mentioned her when we talked about uh, the original Sleepaway Camp. I kind of touched on. Uh, sleep away camp too a little bit, but yeah, Ali with the porta potty scene, getting stabbed in the back a couple of times, and then sh- her ass shoved into the porta potty, getting covered in leeches and shit and everything, pissed it, and everything. Yeah, it, it was, was just good. perfect. And to anybody who's listening to this currently, you will be hearing our daughter gabbing in the background. She's very vocal today, so if you hear her. <laughs> She's putting in her own two cents over here. No, she she's looking for me. I had just heard her calling for daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Looking for dada. Yep. 
Dada, Dada's in the office. Yeah, I'm in the office. But yeah, no, the Porty Potty is definitely the um, the favorite scene, I think. And like even earlier, just to kind of get us a refresher again, while I think we yeah, while we watched it and stuff like that. But once we realized like we didn't have enough time to maybe watch like three, we quickly like went through this video uh, channel on YouTube that pretty much is, did like a kill count, and he kind of briefly. When uh swept us through like both films to kind of get us caught up, but yeah, uh, the porta potty is the golden kill, I would say, of that movie. Everything else was just like mediocre. <laughs> I mean, kind of like with the kill that you just said, Dustin, with uh, with the tree branch to the face and then the tongue gets cut out. I think that's like probably the weirdest part, anyway, just because it's like. Um. Yeah, it just you can definitely tell right there that the the acting would not super a. So like I said, number three, uh, that was filmed in the same six weeks. It was written um while they were making part two. So I mean, there there's no pre production on that movie. They just threw out a fucking script real quick and jumped right into it so uh y'all have any thoughts on three i, I don't know did y'all get a chance to watch it or yeah we we've, we've seen it um we just didn't get a chance to re re-watch it for oh, okay. like the purpose of this but we have seen it and i love a couple kills from this movie i think everybody's favorite has to be the other one more and um as we met as i kind of mentioned like a second ago how angela somehow managed to like hijack a garbage truck to run over the original counselor lady that was actually supposed to be going to the camp and instead froze her in the fucking trash can thing grabbed her shit and like um gets onto the bus, which I thought was really hilarious, and, uh, and probably that's where the comedic aspect continues with the third one, especially right off the, right off the, uh, first, like, what, five minutes into yeah. it. Yeah, uh, milkshake. I'm going to fucking camp today. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the scene where, uh, she gets run over, uh, I don't know if you got this, guys notice but when they when uh, the dump truck hits the dummy that's supposed to be maria you can see like the head fall off of it briefly like, oh right really truck, yeah you can see the head fall off of the dummy but uh did you guys notice the number on on the on the I dump did truck? Not. i did the number anyway. was uh did you notice it does the nope. number was the address of the from elm street the elm street house really the home that's, address that's, yeah <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Clever. Yeah, fourteen twenty-eight. I think it was fourteen twenty-eight. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that's that how wasn't we... like Johnny Depp's house, right? That wasn't Johnny Depp's. No, house, that right? was uh, Nancy's house. Nancy, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I I still gotta say real quick though that Johnny Depp like fucking killing. Nightmare on Elm Street, it's got to be, like, the most ridiculous and, like, best kill for a, one of the, kind of like that movie and right, the franchise yeah. at the time. It's because it's just so fun to watch, I guess. Right, and get sucked into the bed and the blood geysers the bed. out of it. <laughs> and it's right, it's just, it's just too much blood, but whatever. And her mom, or his mom just walks in and just starts screaming, like... Like she sees a burglar in her house and not this bed spewing blood. <laughs> uh, uh, I think that would like one of Johnny Depp's like five second fame type of right. roles. <laughs> so, uh, when when Wes Craven shot Scream, uh, that's the reason he cast Skeet Ulrich in that role is because he looked so much like Johnny Depp from uh. I did, not, I did not know that. <laughs> that that's interesting. Yeah, that uh I think Skeet Ulrich when they first show him, he's like, No, it's uh Rose McGowan. She's wearing Johnny Depp's football jersey. And when you first see her in the movie. 
That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, no, um, it's the, like, I don't know, I, um, I'm trying to, like, really think of, like, when I saw Teenage Wasteland, like, I didn't mind it, but, well, um, it's just almost like, how the fuck do these people still don't realize this is her, you know? Even though I, under, like, like, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't get it. And then, like, it just gets better and better. It's, and I think one one of the kills we kind of forgot to mention about in uh, number two, because it uh, does play out with three, is the cop's son, he, who gets beheaded right. in two. And this is also supposed to be the same cop that arrested Andrew back in the, uh, the first movie. So anyway, he comes back for the third one, technically. But this time, he's not, a, he's not really a cop. He's a count, uh, counselor. And it's just like I'll, I'll be jumping to this part real quick because it's just I just want to say it and get it done with. But it's just it's just like why not just fucking have shot her? Like just get it right. over with for what <laughs> she did, for what he did, if she did to um, his, like his son. Like why not just fucking just do her in, you know? And instead, it just plays out to be this ridiculous like. Andrew is holding something behind her back, and it's just like, seriously, dude. Like, <laughs> and then he's like, "What are you gonna do? You gonna knife me? You gonna cut me? You gonna do this? Do that? You gonna cut like, my head off like you did my son? Done. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm and oh, I'm a gun. Do, a gun. And it's just like <laughs> three bullets or four bullets, maybe. And then that was it. It's just like, what a what what a ridiculous man to just let that happen. I like the fact that they used the same actress for Angela as they did in 2. At least they were consistent with that, even though they like changed up her personal style to fashion her after the girl she ran over with the garbage truck. I didn't think it was horrible, but I would definitely have to say that, like, my whole favorite part of the whole thing is when that, like, bitch of a counselor gets her fucking head taken off with the lawnmower after she's buried up to her neck. Right. Yeah, yeah, Lily. Yeah, Lily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love that. I love that scene. But other than that, it wasn't, it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't my favorite out of the whole franchise. It had its moments. Yeah, that movie uh, was like super heavily edited by the MPAA. They made them take so many of the kills out. Uh, I think one of the notes they got back was that uh, the scene where I can't think of her name, where she's going up the flagpole. They said that uh, one of the MPAA censors physically got ill, so they had to take pretty much that whole scene out. And most of the scenes, like where Lily gets her head cut off with the lawnmower, they had to cut all of that out pretty much. It just got super heavily edited by the MPAA. They were going to give them an X rating, and they were contractually obligated to get an R for that film. So, yeah, they also had to take out, or should I say, do the up close shot of uh, the guy that is tied to the tree that gets his arm cut right. off. Yeah, that's probably the worst one. We're talking about a movie where like four people get killed with a stick, but that's probably the worst kill of the movie. Yeah, and just for the record, what year what year was uh, the third film like technically released? I know they were filmed at the same time, two and three. Yeah, they were both out. filmed in 87, but uh, two was released in 88 and four, uh, three was released in 89. What a, what a weird time, I guess. <laughs> You know, when it came to film, it makes me wonder, like, what they ca could get away with now. That is why right. I also, like, why not just do the unrated version now? I mean, unless they don't even have the um, that type of footage anymore with all these kills, unless they had to edit it down so much. I mean, I Wait, don't know. Uh, the DP, I can't think of his name. Uh, once they edited out the films, he pretty much disposed of them. He sent them off somewhere and then they disposed of them after like a year. He never expected to 
things like DVDs and bonus features. He said that's his biggest regret in life is that he didn't save all of that and release an unrated cut 20 years later. But So it's all gone forever, and we'll never have any of those. Wow, <laughs> what a shame. Yep. What a shame. <laughs> if, if you get the DVD, they do have some of them. You can see some of where they was going with it. Like uh, The kills are like way more graphic on the DVD, but it's like really shitty versions of them. Some of them don't even have sound. And Ah, yeah. Yeah, those type of ones, kind of like how they did the unrated version for like My Body Valentine and Silent Night right, Every Night. Yeah. yeah. They're still good, don't get me wrong, but like you could definitely tell like they they didn't get the the um production like the the rest of the film because obviously it wasn't originally in the film to begin with. So yeah. Yeah, so with this film, um like the whole story of it was you're gonna take some underprivileged inner city kids and mix them with some of the privileged rich kids from another neighborhood. And they're supposed to go out to this uh sharing and caring retreat. It's the same camp from uh from the year before, which was Camp Rolling Hills, but they call this one Camp uh what is it? I can't remember. New Horizons. Camp New Horizons is the new one. It's the same camp under new ownership. All the good kids in the film are named after characters from the Brady Bunch. And all the bad kids in the film are named after characters from West Side Story. I don't know if you guys have seen the new West Side Story, but it's fucking amazing. It was my pick for movie of the year since Malignant wasn't uh, wasn't nominated. I really loved the new West Side Story. But anyway. But uh, yeah, all the, all the bad kids are named after West Side Story characters. And, then, uh, and, the and I didn't even know that. Yeah, well, the counselor is Michael J. Pollard is named after Herman Monster. So he's Herman. And then uh, his wife is named Lily. Lily Monster. That's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so like in the last movie, and like uh, it's kind of a trope of these movies, you have the final girl. So the final girl of this film was, what was her name? Tracy Griffith's uh, character. I got it written down somewhere. Tracy Griffith was Marsha. Marsha Brady. So Marsha was our final girl of this film. What did you start with Tessa first? What did you think of Marsha comparatively in this movie? Do you think she was a good final girl? And how do you think she compares to Molly from uh, from last year's Sleepaway Camp? Mm. She wasn't a bad final girl um, in comparison to Molly. I don't... She uh, she was more brassy, I guess. She didn't, like, scream when she came face-to-face -face with Angela like Molly did. She actually took action and went after Angela and actually stabbed her right. in the gut. Like, she wasn't going to let her get away. Meanwhile, Molly's just like... I just need to get the fuck away from Angela. Like, I want nothing to do with Angela. I'm just going to run as far as I can, as fast as I can, put as much distance between me and Angela as possible. And what's the other girl's name? Again? Marcia. Marcia. She's, yeah. Marcia's like, I'm not going to let this bitch get away. Right. I'm going to take matters into my own hands. Like, <laughs> she had enough. So she was a better final girl than Molly because she actually took action and went after Angela. Yeah, and to touch on that, Angela should have definitely would have died if it wasn't for what's it fit that came in and basically threw her off of Angela. Tony? Yeah, Tony. Yeah, Tony. Yep. So, yeah, I agree. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But then again, but then again, I bet if Sandra would have died, we never would have gotten what was it? Survivor and uh, return to <laughs> return. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll touch on Survivor for a second. Like I said uh, in that, that last podcast, it's only 20 minutes of footage that survived over the years. But, uh, but yeah, I, I agree with everything you guys said about Marsha. I think she was a great subversion of expectations. When you think of a final girl, especially from this time period, they tend to be weak. Outside of somebody like Laurie Strode. I mean, she was a little weak in that movie too, but 
uh, oh, she, just, she has the fight, yeah, in Halloween. But yeah, uh, Marsha, she's she's not a virgin. When Tony wants to sleep with her, she whips out the fucking Jimmy hat. She's ready to go. Uh, Angela, when she breaks free, she goes after Angela with the axe. So she's not your typical final girl. That's not somebody. Uh, she's not the type of final girl we saw in movies at this time period. So I thought it was a little ahead of its time. Oh, it was very ahead of its time. Just kind of like with Alien, like what go back to 1979 with Alien, you know? Right, that was Ripley, like one yeah. of that was one of the sci-fi movies that actually had a female as the protagonist, even though Ripley Row was made out to be a male. But you know, look, look what that did. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But yeah, so uh, any any favorite kills from? From three, um, I'll just stick with the one more one, and besides that one, I thought the the tent scene was kind of nice. Uh, which one? The one where she burns everybody, or the one where she kills? No, the, the one where uh, she puts the tent the tent spikes through the guy. Yeah, yeah. angels are pretty. Angels can fly. Which, with <laughs> the YouTuber kind of brought up an uh, interesting perspective. In a way, uh, Dustin, maybe you might know how to answer this. Actually, is so. How did that one tent blow up with the uh, flare or whatever the fuck she threw into it? Like, what was in there that would make it blow up like that? <laughs> so I think they just fucked that up because it, it was like their first time doing something like that. But in, in the movie, she just pours a little bit of gasoline on her, but the whole time she's pouring it, it's like spraying all over her. So if that tent, if that tent blew up, she's fucking blowing up too. But uh, it, it, yeah. in the movie, you see Pamela Springsteen like jump back when it happens because everybody was caught off guard by how big that explosion was, and she actually almost gets hit because one of the wires flies off and like whips at her. She them. <laughs> she she was a trooper. Talking about Pamela? Yes. Yeah, she weighs like a hundred pounds, soaking wet. But she's having to uh, drag these giant men all over the fucking camp when she kills them to hide bodies and shit. So they were constantly the, having um, to come up with uh, ways to help her pick up the people that she was killing because she was so small. She couldn't pick these fucking people up. No, but they all were nicely stacked in the fucking abandoned place. <laughs> which, yeah. um, which, um, all these bodies had like. Hatchet or actors or something would uh, like in in them, except for like two of them, because they were the good the good people. Right? Yeah, she has them all, and uh, she ties up the three last winners, and they have to run through the cabins to find Marsha. Yeah, got all the bodies rigged up everywhere. Two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you need to find you need to find her, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or but she she tries to kill him anyway. I mean, well, I guess well, she, yeah. she was gonna let Tony and Marsha go. Yeah, she, she even she had a crush on Tony. Tony. Yep, yep. She even even admits it too. Like, oh, I had a crush on you. <laughs> well, personally, like I like all the characters. Like, um, I I don't think any, most of the kills people are just getting whacked with sticks in this movie and then burned. But uh, you know, I like the firecracker kill. Like. Well, like, well, like you said earlier, Dustin, I mean, what else could they have done? I mean, everything they tried to, like, do, NPC or whatever, NPA, whatever the fuck. Right, right yeah. They're just like, take it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the scene where the girl gets dropped off the flagpole, they had a close-up shot of the head exploding when it hits the ground, and oh, Angela was hilarious. supposed to go over and scoop up some of the brains and eat it before she runs off scene. <laughs> uh <laughs> They had a shot in there originally where um, Michael J. Pollard, who was Herman in the movie, uh, Angela was supposed to stab him through the dick with a hot poker and call it roasted wieners. <laughs> they they couldn't afford to do the shot, so they just Ooh, whacked him with a stick. rough trade. <laughs> it, it made you both cringe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe one day if I ever find my Curse of the Wood Nymph movie I shot back in high school, I even have a callback to the the stick kill uh, when Herman dies where he's getting the stick through the mouth. <laughs> I put that in my movie. I think you have it on YouTube. I don't think I have that 
clip in the, on YouTube. I might actually it might be on there. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't remember either. But I do know that 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 film is. You sent it to me one time. We had probably the same budget on that film that they did for Sleepaway Camp Three, which was like ten dollars. <laughs> I know that when we were watching like the kill count for like Return to Sleepaway Camp, Paul made a face at the part where the guy that was tied to the tree <laughs> with the fish line tied to his right, you, you know, <laughs> and gets ripped off by the jeep. I saw Paul make a face out, out of my peripheral because I <laughs> I purposefully watched his face when it happened because I'm like I'm like for any male that sees this they're gonna be like Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the funniest part of that is the you know they tie it to the jeep and she yeah. drives for like a freaking mile and then his wiener is still attached when the jeep is like struggling to pull his wiener from his body. He's got a pretty strong cock. <laughs> it must be Superman. It's resilient. <laughs> Made of resilient. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so we talked about now, the kills. And, and I guess there's not much to talk about in three. No, not uh, really, and, except for the, the guy that got tied up to uh, get his arm ripped off and stuff. Like, I think Jesus. that was Bobby. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Like some of the shit he was saying, what like it's like it was just too too funny. <laughs> um, like you just definitely know that they were definitely trying to figure out something fucking cheesy for him to say right before his arm get ri- ripped off. Like, right. ooh, this is kind of ki- like I forget exactly how he worded it, but it's like, oh, he this is kind of kinky. Like, this is, are we gonna do it like, like they do? This is like uh, campground bondage. Yeah, <laughs> campground bondage. Yeah. When do we screw? That's my favorite <laughs> one. <laughs> when do we screw? <laughs> I really appreciate what you're doing for me. When do yep. we screw? <laughs> and then and that that scene would have been so easy to shoot. All he had to do was put his arms behind the tree, but instead he puts them inside his shirt when they rip it off. Uh, which I don't know if you can see that in the movie, but at the end of it, you can see he's just sitting there with his arms in his shirt. And uh, instead of having fucking stumps there, it's just his arms are in his shirt. So to make it look like his arms were actually ripped off. I'm going to have to go back and look at that now. I wouldn't really (laughs) pay too too close attention, but now would you pointing that out and make me want to go back and see this? (laughs) It seems so simple. It's almost like they did it on purpose. Well, obviously, I mean, they didn't think about, you know, they, they, well, they probably did, but they were like, ah, nobody's going to really see it. It's like, it's just only going to be like a two second thing where we just show your body and that's it. Nobody's going to have time to see it. <laughs> right. and, but yeah, but I think, I think you see that part for uh, like almost five to six seconds. So it's like a little bit too long. So yeah, you would definitely have plenty of time. You would be like, wait a minute, that lump or whatever is not supposed to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh so you guys like uh night of the demons night of the demon yes uh arab in sleepaway camp through she was the asian chick from night of the demons which i don't remember her name in that movie but i knew she was yeah she looks familiar <laughs> yeah i just could not put a name on her or na- uh, like uh at least a film or something i would but i did recognize her i would like god she looks real familiar and i just can't i cannot figure it out why but so thank you for that clarification. <laughs> yeah, and uh, which I think I, I might have mentioned, I don't know, but uh, the chick that plays Marsha, Tracy Griffith, that's Melanie Griffith's little sister. Big Hollywood actress, Melanie Griffith. Which they were, they, <laughs> I'm going to assume I should know this, but like right uh, now. Melanie Griffith. <laughs> yeah, she was like big in the 80s and 90s. Uh, I think my favorite movie from her is a really shitty movie called Cherry 2000. About this dude trying to get a sex robot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That rings yeah. a bell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love Cherry 2000. If you guys, uh, me too. Yeah, me too. It's on YouTube, I think. Definitely a favorite. Yeah. A lot of movies are on YouTube now. Some are free. Some you have to pay like hey, three bucks hey, for. Dustin, have you ever heard of Highway to Hell? Yes, I love Highway to Hell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, love how we know that's uh, the first movie that had Ben Stiller in it. Yep, <laughs> and Christy Christy Swanson. Christy and, Swanson, yeah. Yep, yeah. That's yeah, good. Second, uh, the hell cop or whatever he is that yep, has like the hell hands cop. for cuffs. <laughs> yep, hell cop. That's funny. <laughs> Great movie. It's another movie we could talk about on the podcast. Yes. <laughs> I still want to, I, I haven't seen Void yet that you guys told me about. And uh, oh, I watched yep. the trailer for it. And I'm like, this movie looks fucking amazing. I don't know why I've never seen it. <laughs> it has one of my favorite contortionists in it. Contortionist. Yeah. Yeah. Like a contortionist scene, or you have a list of favorite actual contortionists? I have a few favorite contortionists <laughs> that I like in movies, but this guy is fucking awesome. He's like <laughs> totally like, it's like, it's like, holy shit. I didn't right, know that's, you could right, move that's like a human? that. Like, move like that, bend like that. It's like unbelievable. That's incredible. I've never paid attention to contortion this before. I'll, I'll start looking for him in movies. He's in um, Scary Story to Tell in the Dark as well. He I've seen that one. He was the jangly man. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, so you remember the part where the jangly man is, like, climbing up the chair to get onto the table? Right, yeah. That That's him. Wasn't he also an alien? Um, no. No. Who was the guy that there was a guy that did um like contortion stuff for like the xenomorphs? Yeah, that guy passed away. I forgot his name right now, but yeah, he he, he was he another away good a while one. ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was really tall too. Ridiculously tall from what I remember. Yeah. But yeah, that that guy sadly passed away, but yeah, he 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 was another one. He would be one of the original Xenomorphs. So, yeah. Very cool. Um, so, I guess, like, since we're talking cheesy stuff, I mean, there, there was a lot of cheesiness going on, even with three, besides the stick beatings and stuff. But, <laughs> like, like, there, like, even inside the cabins and the meetings like everything was just fucking cheesy right. and and i don't know if they were really just like like that oh that almost makes me feel like they weren't really writing a script it was almost like improv i was wondering if that was something that they were trying to do it was just like well you kind of got the idea of, of filming too now we'll try to do something else but like make it cheesy and it was almost like some scenes were making it look as if they didn't really have a dialogue or some sort of like what do this if you know what i mean yeah i get I, yeah i know what you're saying like the script was written in like a weekend probably and that they probably spent another day or two for pre-production, so they probably just gave them like a general guideline of what they wanted in the scene and just let them do whatever they wanted. Yeah, and that's why I really feel like it was more improv with three going well going into three is what I should say. Yeah, yeah, they're like stumbling over their lines, and in low budget films like this, you don't have the luxury of redoing shit or throwing shit out so you just gotta use everything so yep yeah and uh and even when like when we were doing our film we would only do a couple takes just to try to figure out different dialogue really because mm -hmm. like maybe the, the one that i was thinking of wasn't really working out the way i wanted it so then, you know, everybody would be like, well, what if we said, what if this person said this instead and this and that? So we we always tried to look at each other's advice, not just the main writers, you know, and like, and that's, a, and that's the thing. Speaking of which, Dustin, so how many writers were actually on Sweepaway Camp 2 and 3? Uh, just Fritz Gordon, which that's not even his real name. I guess he was just embarrassed to be making a Sleepaway Camp sequel. So he used an alias. I don't think that's his real name anyway. But uh, yeah, Fritz, Fritz Gordon was the only one that, that was the writer on these movies. Hmm. 
No, well, we got lucky on that because most of most of the films nowadays have like what fucking five million writers. <laughs> <laughs> well, and like you said, I mean, they probably ad libbed a good portion of it. So. Oh, they had to of. <laughs> uh, that's why. That's why. Like, like watching it again, it made me almost feel like I was watching like an improv. Uh, sh- theater like some like some sort of theater going on like it wasn't like an actual movie in some of the scenes some scenes actually felt like they were they were fleshed out a little bit like they, like it needed it needed it to be serious maybe it would like to stick beating or something i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah i know what you mean yeah that's one thing i like about the third one is it feels more intimate than the other movies or just like we have a few more days at this camp. Let's just make a movie real quick. So let's get some people and shoot them in the woods. We don't have to pay much for the, to be, to uh, film. We're in, already in here, but it will fucking do it. <laughs> right, it just feels more intimate. I, I like, I like shit like that. Every time I watch this movie, it, it, it's not as good as the other two, but it just feels more intimate. I feel like the cast and crew really cared about, they were really happy with each other and they got along really good. And it just comes across, I think in the movie. Oh, I, I, I'm pretty sure. Well, they had to get along, you know, yeah. like <laughs> six weeks is a pretty long. And I can only imagine like some of these actors, what they, they're, I bet they weren't even planning. Like, I mean, obviously they weren't planning to be shooting fucking two movies. <laughs> they must right. have only knew about one. And then as they get there, it's like, oh, do you guys just want to do a third one? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. It's like, I got nothing going on. Fuck, you're my ride home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're my ride home. I gotta get on that bus. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have any uh, favorite characters uh, from the third movie? <sighs> Which here yours first? <laughs> Mine? Yeah, I, I fucking love everybody. I love uh, I love Riff with his little fucking weak ass raps. I love Snowboy with his terrible graffiti. Uh, I, I love the little slutty girl. I can't think of her name. Who's trying to fuck Michael J. Pollard's old ass for some reason? Uh, yeah, the Asian chick from uh, Night of the Demons. I mean, I pretty much like everybody in this movie. I, li- I even like sh- Barney. That's shocking. <laughs> that's shock. That's shocking. Um, honestly, I'd have to go with Bobby. I think <laughs> he he was so out there and and so spaced out that it it's like he he, he was the worst example of a blonde that you could possibly get. One less politician or one less idiot in politics, as Angela puts it. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Um, but otherwise, that fine that that final girl at the end was definitely a really good addition. I think like she really made it pretty believable to have, mm-hmm. and that's always good because you know with these type of weird slasher films um, is what I'm gonna go with. Uh, you know, sometimes as Dustin I think was saying earlier, like some of these characters you just don't care if they live or die in this case i'm actually was glad that these people got to uh, see another day (laughs) (laughs) what'd you think tess any uh favorite characters i didn't think the cast at all was bad for this movie i think everybody added their own touch of uniqueness to their characters um because, like you said, you mentioned the the girl that was from Night of the Demons. I like the fact that she appeared in this film. Because it's kind of funny. I actually watched Night of the Demons uh, a couple of days ago. Nice. While Amara was taking a nap and I was trying to have some, some downtime from, you know... Being a, being, a full, yeah. being a full-time mommy because that's a 24/7 do- 24/7 job 365 days of the year you don't you don't get a break from that most anyways job. it is the most important job in the world and I love it but anyways yeah it's kind of it was just kind of funny how I I noticed that connection and I'm like I'm like wait where have I seen her before and I'm like 
Oh, wait a minute. I was like, she's in freaking Night of the Demons as the freaking doctor's, like, <laughs> nurse's assistant girlfriend. And she ends up getting her, her freaking neck snapped in Night of the Demons. I think those so, might have been her only two roles, too. I can, I mean, I didn't look her up or anything, but I don't I even think all Wikipedia. I haven't seen her in anything else. I just remember her from Night of the Demons and um, Sleepaway Camp 3. So, definitely her and uh the the their choice for the final girl for for 3 i think those two were like my favorites everybody else wasn't bad but th those two girls were definitely my favorites yep so uh what i would give about? it a i would going to say i'll give this a solid 7 7 <laughs> what would you say tessa Two and three. Um, for the uh, campy comedic horror vibe, and for the um, I guess some of the their little Easter eggs and stuff like that, and some of their kills that I really liked, especially to the people that really, really deserved the really nasty. Like good kills. Uh, I'll give it. I'm kind of teeter tottering between a six and a half and a seven. <laughs> Those are solid scores. So, yeah, who, just for the Easter egg alone, too, real quick, and I'll bump it to a seven and a half because of the Easter eggs. Oh, uh, yeah. So, well, who would you recommend this movie to or, or would you recommend it would you recommend it on, on as a standalone film or or as a sequel to Sleepaway camp do you think it works on its own uh the first one definitely worked on its own for sure uh as for the sequels it's hard it's 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 hard to say like it's like two and three go together but like one two and three don't make sense together not. yeah but no. like two and three go together in a sense but like if you try to put the whole like whole like franchise or the whole group together it doesn't like it doesn't make sense as a whole I would almost say two and three are its own thing and then one and what would that be? Five, which would be Return to Sweepaway Camp. Um, I would say those two would work together, obviously, but just because Foolish Rhodes is also in both of those, right. she comes back in return. So that would be like the better, the better storyline. I would say it's almost it's almost like saying like with Halloween. You know, like, one, two, and three just don't fucking work together. But then when you do the stupid Halloween with the Halloween 2018 version, it kind of goes together. Oh, the Even original though, and the new ones? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that way. I mean, it's so stupid that there's 40, there's a gap in between there, but... Honestly, I just feel like it's really better that way. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess if we really wanted to throw in the gap a little bit, if in that season, uh, in that timeline, I would just throw in season of the witch. Uh, I know Michael Myers isn't in it, but it still would his just mask kinda... is in it. Yeah, yeah and that, that's <laughs> it. That's it, though. Um, it's like in a commercial, the silver shamrock. <laughs> Uh, Silver Shamrock, I can't remember the name. Silver Shamrock Halloween or something? Some shit like that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know that basically was made for the trick-or-treaters, which that was probably the, the badass part about that film, but other than that, I think it would, well, it would work, actually, because it was focused on the trick-or-treaters, and that supposedly w would be taking place while Michael Myers is chained up in the fucking jail mental house wherever the fuck yeah. he is <laughs> yeah. where he basically is when he comes back into 2018 so i guess that would help fill in the gaps a little bit yeah well uh, yeah uh, talking about halloween i love the third movie 
I love the third movie a lot. Uh, <laughs> but I don't accept a world where Michael Myers exists inside the same world as these killer androids from the third one. But I do like the third movie a lot. But I, w- I would separate three from the other Halloweens. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> But yeah, if you guys don't have anything else to add on to the Sleepaway Camp 2 or 3 films, uh, you know, personally me, anybody that grew up with me knows that I love these movies. I made all of my friends and all of their parents watch this mo- all three of these movies growing up. Uh, That's hilarious. I can only imagine <laughs> their reactions. I would literally watch these movies back to back to back every night. I loved all three of them. I loved all the behind the scenes stuff. And I would definitely recommend it to everybody. Well, if you're into these kind of uh, psychological so bad, they're thrillers, good movies. that too. <laughs> but I don't think the first one is necessarily, I don't consider that a bad movie. It, it gets grouped in with bad movies. I don't consider it a bad movie. Two and three, I do consider so bad they're good. Well, that, that's what happens when different people, you know, put their paws in somebody else's shit. We, <laughs> we get garbage some, most of the time. Like, what, what, I mean, Let's go back to another franchise for a minute. Like, look at Alien. Look what happened to what Radu Scott did to what he basically created, helped create back in 1978, 79. And then when we got, like, Prometheus and Alien Covenant, look what, the, look what he fucking did with those. It made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's... Basically, what I've been trying to say lately is just give it a give it watch it once and then form your own opinion. Like I said, Sleepaway Camp isn't for everybody, and the sequels are for even less people. But I love them. <laughs> well, if I could figure out where to find Survivor and Return to Sleepaway Camp, I would love to at least see those so I can at least say I watched them. <laughs> Am I missing yeah. another one, actually? Uh, the I only missing? other one that's loosely based would be Son of Sleepaway Camp. The one I was Son telling you about. Camp. Which is, uh, yep, yep, yep. You can find that one cheap. It's Memorial Day Massacre. But to okay. make it Son of Sleepaway Camp, they just replaced the music with the music from the first Sleepaway Camp. Just okay. called it a sequel. <laughs> and it, if, you find, if you do find the Son of Sleepaway Camp version of it, it has a really gratuitous porn scene, just a straight up hardcore porn that they just cut into the movie for no reason. Ha- about halfway through the movie. <laughs> wow. It has none of the same character. It's literally literally just a porn scene that they took from another porn and just threw into the movie. <laughs> that's now that's that's funny. <laughs> wow. That's that's incredible. <laughs> hey that's fucking random. <laughs> Yeah. What would you expect from a knockoff Sleepaway Camp sequel? Um. Well, <laughs> it's better than having, you know, Night of the Living Dead and all on everybody's TVs, right? Right. <laughs> yep. I mean, I guess, I guess that that will teach people. <laughs> yeah. That'll throw that. That'll throw them off. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. <laughs> But yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about the sequels, man. Well, that's good, man. So, once again, I appreciate you for hosting this piece of shit podcast. I no, I'm you guys letting me talk about these movies. Uh, well, it ain't. It wasn't gonna be us. That's for sure. <laughs> um, but you know, you you definitely showed how much you appreciate these films, and I mean, I'm not. And I don't want to always say, like, all these films we talk about are trash or I have a good time with these shitty ones or something. But, you know, if it's well done, then, I, then you know, it would be great. It would be great to, to, uh, to have. But other than that, I'm not, I'm not worried. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if Tessa's going to be... Uh, available, but because the little one is uh, definitely making her work right now. But anyway, Dustin, it was a pleasure to have you. And if there's any other shitty sequels that you would like to uh, suggest to us in the near future, please let us know because we would probably would be down to talk about how shitty they are, <laughs> depending on what they are. I'll try to but find no. some real shit for you guys next time. 
Well, I'll be thinking too. So <laughs> I'll be thinking of some interesting one. Like um, there, there's two series that I would love to talk about. And it's kind of funny because Tesla hadn't even, we haven't even finished it. Uh, the easy one to finish, which is Cold Prey. It's a foreign film. There's like only two of them in the U.S. that you can actually see because the third one is strictly overseas. It never got imported over. So that's like the only way miss aspect of it. But the third one in the series is basically like uh, a prequel where it would have been nice to see anyway because it would have actually filled in a, a story of the uh, little boy from the the first Cold Prey. But that's about it. Yeah, sounds good, man. All right. Well, for everybody else listening, that was it. Game over. Go cut yourself and like get pulled on like strings of campground bondage because <laughs> everything is just gonna be happening right in your front doorsteps, and it might even be a battery acid for all we know getting slammed right into your face and fish iron taken off part that should not be taken off especially by a, a jeep anyway the point of this is i hope you survived this and <laughs> maybe next time it will be a little bit more better uh we did have well, some i i i do see why dustin said call, gave you the title with genocidal and homicidal and all that into it because <laughs> if you listen to how you like introduce the episode and do the outro to the episode. <laughs> I'm like, nobody can see my face right now, but I'm raising eyebrows when he when he does this. Like, anyway, oh, really? <laughs> well, anyway, that was it. Game over. Have a good time. Don't go to this fucking camp, especially if there's an Andrew there. Run away. And, um... Otherwise, if you are there and there is a such thing as an Andrew out there, make sure you're a good boy or girl. Don't do anything or other. stupid. Yeah, yeah. And just, uh, you know, have fun, I guess. Until next time, my name was Paul Dosky. I'm Dustin Walker. And I'm Tessa Baker. And we want you to stay, stay scary. scary.